It's been a year since Russia first occupied Crimea and nearly a year since a full-blown separatist conflict broke out in eastern Ukraine. We in the West tend to look at this conflict solely through the lens of Russian aggression, but there's so much more to understand. You need to understand Ukraine's history, and in particular, how that history has left the country with deep political, linguistic, economic, just fundamental national divisions. So we can see this, first of all, by just looking at a pretty basic political map of Ukraine. If you look at the results in the election that brought Yanukovych to power, you can see that the eastern regions of the country were far more likely to support Yanukovych, and the western regions were far more likely to support Tymoshenko. And the interesting thing about that is the, that political divide that you see comes up in a ton of different aspects of Ukraine's history and geography. So one area is the linguistic divides. The divides of the different regions of the country that are predominantly Russian-speaking as opposed to predominantly Ukrainian-speaking really closely mirror that political divide. Russia went through a series of policies to do what they called Russification in the 1700s under Catherine the Great, so this goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. Those policies involved everything from settling ethnic Russians in those regions to forbidding people from speaking the Ukrainian language. It continued well into the 20th century. Stalin essentially orchestrated this massive famine that killed millions of people in Ukraine. After that, they increased the resettlement of Russians into Ukraine. You were left with a Ukraine that looked very different. Parts of the country were much more likely to speak Russian, be culturally Russian, be ethnically Russian, and it's had a lasting impact on the country as a whole. Fast forward to modern Ukraine. When Yanukovych was elected, he was negotiating with the EU about a deal that would have brought closer EU ties. So then when he abandoned that and took a bailout from Russia instead, that was perceived as him really kind of turning away from the West and turning towards Russia. And that was very controversial. It prompted protests that were largely clustered in the western part of the country and the capital city, Kiev. And eventually it forced Yanukovych out of office point is that this is not just Russia invading Ukraine. The point is that there are Ukrainian separatists who are actively trying to achieve independence from Kiev. Different parts of Ukraine have a very different idea of what kind of country Ukraine should be. And that doesn't make it okay. That doesn't make it acceptable as a matter of international law. It certainly doesn't justify what Russia has been doing, but it also shouldn't be something that you ignore. 